Mr. Lewis, on the on Mr. Cruz's case, the officer is still involved in undercover work, and so the request has been uh, to either allow the officer to keep his camera off um, or to simply um, not go on YouTube. Um, you're you're muted, Mr. Lewis. I prefer it being on YouTube and just staying black. Oh, okay. All right. Well, if, if that is your position, that's what we will do. Um, who is my interpreter? I can't see. Oh, okay. Raise your right hand, sir. Do you swear or affirm the translation you shall provide from English into Spanish and Spanish into English shall be truthful and to the best of your ability to help you, God? Yes, I do. What is your name, sir? Christian. Christian, what's the last name? Jimenez. Jimenez. All right. Mr. Jimenez, thank you. If you will tell Mr. Cruz that I am Judge Gallant and that we are here for purposes of a preliminary hearing. I show he is being held on several warrants. Warrant 21W07345, possession of methamphetamine with intent to distribute is the only charge that is before the court today. I do note he's using the services of the interpreter and his attorney, Mr. Lawrence Lewis, is seated next to him for this hearing. By consent of the parties, the state's witness, Officer Wolf, will testify. We are still streaming live on YouTube, but he, by consent of the parties, will testify with his video off. So we will be able to hear him, but by consent of the parties, we will not be able to see him due to the sensitive nature of his ongoing work. Mr. Norris Lewis, um, if you will go ahead, sir, and call your witness. Your Honor, the state calls Detective Wolf. Detective Wolf, if you can unmute yourself. Judge? Yes, yes sir. sir. Let, me, let me handle one thing. I, 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 don't, I don't doubt that this person who's translating is very skilled, but I know that I talk fast, the court talks fast. Uh, uh, the prosecutor might talk fast. So I, I want to make sure that he's comfortable at the pace. Okay. And if he becomes uncomfortable, I'll just have him hold up a finger, which means please slow down a little bit. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Are you comfortable, Mr. Hernandez? All right. Just let us know if we start talking too fast um wolf had unmuted himself and mr norris lewis you were about to swear him in yes detective wolf unmute again please yes sir do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter now pending before the court shall be the truth the whole truth nothing but truth stuff you got i do please introduce yourself to the court my name is detective wolf i work with the gwinnett county police department special investigation section narcotics unit no, are you a certified police officer? I am. Uh, and were you at all times so employed and so certified uh, as they related to the taking of warrant 21W07345 uh, against a Mr. Eduardo Garcia Cruz? I was. Uh, and is the individual against whom that warrant pictured in the box labeled jail court video number one. Yes, I see him in jail court number one uh, in the orange jumpsuit. Uh, Detective Wolf, was there uh, on May 21st a search warrant executed at 5830 Buford Highway Unit B2? Yes, sir. Uh, to your knowledge, was that a valid search warrant signed by a judge? Yes, sir. Uh, and are you familiar with the facts and circumstances of the execution of that warrant? I am. Uh, how do they relate to the taking of this warrant against Mr. Cruz? So on May 21st, 2021, around 10.03 a.m., uh, the search warrant for 5030 Buford Highway, North Cross, Georgia, Unit B2, was executed uh, by, mem by members of my unit. Um, Upon making entry into the home, contact was made with Mr. Cruz. Um, after a complete search of the home, a room identified to be his, which was the... One second, one second, one second. Yep. One second. 
Give me one second, Judge. One second. Thanks, Mr. Lewis. Thank you, Judge. All right, go ahead, Detective Wolf. All right, Essen well, essentially, after the uh, search warrant was executed, uh, various narcotics of various amounts were found um, it, it, all across the residence. Uh, there was another individual, Mr. Penaloza, who was arrested. Um, there was definitely an indication of narcotic sales coming out of that home based on the way they were packaged, uh, the amount of narcotics that were found and packaging material found all over the place. But essentially, in the left side upstairs bedroom, which we labeled 2 Delta 2D during our search warrant execution, um, this room specifically was identified to belong to Mr. Eduardo Cruz, um, in which he later admitted under advisement of Miranda in an interview. Um, in this room, uh, two cell phones were seized, 2.7 grams of a crystal like substance, which was suspected to be methamphetamine along with an additional amount of crystal like substance, which weighed 25.2 grams. Uh, this was in a gold vase that was sitting on a shell, shelf, and it did field test positive for methamphetamine by investigator Hall. Um, Mr. Cruz was also asked about this substance under advisement of Miranda in that same interview. Um, and he did admit that the methamphetamine belonged to him. Um, based on the fact that we found essentially uh, just under 28 grams of methamphetamine, which is a trafficking amount. Um, based on my training experience and anything I've ever seen, that is way more than a user amount, and coupled with the activity that was found in the house with packaging implements and uh, materials that you'd be using for sales um, were, were found. He was charged with possession with intent to distribute. And he also had an outstanding warrant, so he was taken in on that that had nothing to do with my investigation. How was the methamphetamine that was found in the room that officers labeled 2 Delta packaged? Um, it was, I, I believe it was in a bag, but it was all packaged together. Um, it wasn't separated out. It was hidden inside of a gold vase that was on his shelf. And how was the 2.7 grams that was found in that same room packaged? I believe it was packaged, um, you know, all 2.7 grams in the same bag, and it was sitting on a shelf in the same bedroom. And where was Mr. Cruz contacted upon officer's entry into the location? So when knocking, when the knocking and announcing was happening at the front door before entry was made, uh, Mr. Cruz was seen by officers who were surrounding the house, um, the townhome rather. He stuck his head out of the second story, um, which I believe is the same bedroom uh, we identified to be his. Uh, but once they physically encountered him, I believe it was on the first floor. People were coming downstairs to the door. And you stated that in your knowledge training experience, uh, the 27 grams of methamphetamine was more than a user would typically use. Could you just briefly describe your knowledge trading experience to the court? Yeah, I, I personally bought um, various amounts of methamphetamine in an undercover capacity. And uh, in general, most people buy a gram. And when you buy 3.5 grams, which would be an eight ball, that's, that's considered a, a decent amount more than a, a normal person would buy. And we're talking about almost 27, we're talking about 27 grams in this case, uh, and only less than a gram away from a trafficking amount of narcotics, which is pretty significant, um, more, more than your average person would use for their personal use. 
and then coupled with the other activity going on in the home, uh, mul- you're having multiple kinds of narcotics all over the house, packaged for sale. Um, it was pretty uh, obvious what was occurring in that house. Uh, and is that location in Gwinnett County? It is. So all the questions I have for Detective Wolf at this time. Cross examination. Thank you, Judge. Detective Wolf, good afternoon. <clears throat> let me see. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Good. All right, let me start here. You executed a warrant at the location where you found my client, is that right? That's correct. Had anybody had contact with my client prior to the execution of the warrant where he had either purchased or sold drugs? Nope. Uh, Judge, one moment. My Hello? Yep, we can hear you. Oh, sorry. My, uh, somebody was ringing in on the other side. I didn't want to mess up the call. Um, not to my knowledge. No, on this day, we just executed the search warrant and encountered him in the home. Um, I, I do not believe anybody from my unit purchased narcotics from this uh, individual. Is it is it a house or apartment? It's a, I'm sorry, it's it's a townhome. Town home. townhomes. And it sounds like it's at least two floors. Is that right? Uh, yes. Two floors. And how many bedrooms? Let me just refer back to my report. Um, So looking back at the report, there's a main living room that was searched, kitchen dining area, downstairs bathroom, uh, an upstairs bedroom, another upstairs bedroom. So I'm seeing it was either a two or three bedroom. I'm seeing two bedrooms searched. Two two or three bedroom townhomes, two people arrested um, when you entered, is that right? Yes. Only two people present, is that right? No, sir. There was, uh, I believe, two others who were present, um, but based on uh, the investigation, they weren't found to be in possession of narcotics at that time. There was a female and another male. Okay, four people present, two people arrested, and and one of the bedrooms was designated my client's bedroom. Is that right? Yes, there was a... uh, there was a um, nickname Carnalito that was painted on the door, which I guess through that investigation was identified as his nickname. Um, and also he plainly admitted that was his bedroom um, okay. under did, Miranda. Did, did any of the other three tell you that that was his bedroom? Not to my knowledge. Most of the uh, answers that we received from other people pertain to their self. They didn't really talk about each other. Okay. Did he indicate, did, did my client indicate how long he had been staying in that bedroom in that townhouse? Uh, not to my knowledge at this point. Like I said, the full interview is recorded, um, but at this point, I just have a gist of it. We're still going through the details. What, was he was he, was he he renting it? Like I said, that's unknown to me at this point. Okay. Well, he was occupying it solely. That's what we know. Okay, uh, and, and, but, but you don't know if he had been there for a day or a week or a month, is that right? That's correct. All I know is that he solely occupied that room and fully admitted to owning the narcotics that were found in it. So. Okay. Um, um, during the, when the police were headed to the location in order to execute the warrant, did they have an idea that they were looking for Eduardo Cruz, whether they knew his name? Did they, did they have an idea this is the person when we execute the warrant that we're going to find inside the residence? Your Honor, objection, relevance? It, 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 it goes to the police officer's familiarity with this person. Um, um, my, I hope the court understands my question. The officer doesn't know if he's there for a day, a week, or a month. Does he have any description of, of the person that they may encounter on the other side of the door when they execute the warrant? Do they have any idea that it's going to be him? Or did he get there three hours earlier and he's just happened to be there? That, that's really my question. Do, are, do they have anything with his face, his name, his description, such that the police, when they execute the warrant, 
are going to say, this is the guy we're looking for. Right. Doesn't that go into the, uh, whether the search warrant was properly issued, what facts they had to issue? The, no, search no, 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 no. The, the search warrant can be valid and then looking for Jeremy Lewis, but I'm not Jeremy Lewis. I know who that is, but that's not me. So when they come through the door looking for a 6'3 guy that's 35 years old, they know when they come up with a 55-year-old guy that this is not the right guy. And, and then so, how, is, how is that relevant to my determination whether he possessed with intent to distribute meth on this date and that time? Because they've already told you, Judge, that they don't know how long he's been there. And so if they come in looking for Jeremy and I'm there and I've only been there for five minutes, that, that's going to argue about my knowledge and intent to possess whatever may be in the room. I may be, I may claim the room, but I haven't even gone into the room yet. I haven't even slept in the room yet. So are yeah. they looking for this guy or are they looking for me? The objection is sustained. Next question, please. Okay. Um, uh, when, when the officers, is it, is it, a, is it a knock and, and wait for the door to be opened or is it a no knock? Yeah. No, this was a this was a knock and announce warrant okay. and uh, sufficient time was given and uh, the female actually opened the door. We never had to breach and make entry. All right. And when you enter the residence, um, where exactly is my client? Yep. Let me refer back to the door. Um, or I'm sorry, the report. So yeah, while knocking was occurring, uh, Mr. Cruz was observed sticking his head out of the upstairs rear window. Uh, and I'm sorry, the rear door was breached, but somebody had opened the front door. So, um, and yes, uh, Mr. Cruz exited the front door. So the female opened the door, another individual exited and Mr. Garcia Cruz I uh, was the third one to exit. Okay, good. So he was in the, in the in the living room area near the front door when the front door opened for the execution of the warrant. Is that right? Yeah, whatever whatever that front door leads into, he was coming out of the front door with the other. Okay. Members. You searched the entire uh, townhouse. Were there any guns located? Not to my knowledge. Were this were this scales or other 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 baggage material located? Yeah, there was packaging uh, implements located all over the residence, um, and there was s small amounts of narcotics that were found all over the residence that couldn't necessarily be tied to one person or the other. Um, okay. But specifically, what was found for Mr. Cruz was that large amount of methamphetamine that he claimed he belonged to him specifically. So. Okay, and is, and is your testimony that he said that 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 the drugs that were located in that room were his drugs? Is that right? Yes, that, that's what the um, investigator Dangle uh, performed an interview with him. I believe with investigator Casada, who is a fluent Spanish speaker, um, and that's what was relayed back to me and reported and documented. Okay, um, and and well, I guess I guess then my next question is: Was that interview on body cam someplace or recorded somehow? Yes, that was recorded. Okay, all right, and that's uh, that's preserved for evidence. Thank you very much. No problem. Any other questions? Mr. Lewis? I don't have any other questions. Thank okay. you, Judge. I don't, I don't know if you're talking about Norris Lewis or Lawrence. Sorry. Lewis. I don't have any questions. Any, any redirect on behalf of the state? No redirect from the state, Your Honor. State risks. All right. Any witnesses or evidence on behalf of the defense? Yes, I'm going to call my client as Eduardo Cruz, Judge. As far as it relates to the merits of the case? Probable cause. That's right. All right. Let me talk to him. All right. Mr. Garcia Cruz, your attorney has indicated he would like to call you to testify in this matter. Because you have pending criminal charges, you have an absolute right to remain silent and to not testify about the facts and circumstances that lead to the accusation against you. Like any of our rights, you can waive it and you can choose to testify before for this court about the facts and circumstances that are the basis of the charges against you. If you waive your right to remain silent, you will be sworn like any other witness. 
You will be allowed to give your testimony, but you will also be subject to cross-examination by the district attorney. And any testimony you give before this court can be used against you in the criminal prosecution of any criminal charges. Do you understand you have the right to remain silent? And to say yes or no, please. Yes. All right. It is a decision that you alone can make. Your attorney, Mr. Lewis, can certainly give you his advice and counsel about whether you should or should not testify. But at the end of the day, it is a decision for you to make about whether you will testify or not testify. Do you need any additional time to speak with your attorney before you make that decision? Um. Do you want to exercise your right to remain silent or do you want to waive it and testify today? No, silence. All right, nope, silence. Mr. Lewis? Yes. All right, looks like we are back live on YouTube. Uh, Detective Wolf, the state, the defense is back. Mr. Lewis, have you had a, a sufficient opportunity to speak with your client? I have, Judge, uh, and I, I believe it's his desire to testify. You can question him again. Okay. So, Mr. Cruz, I've given you uh, some time to speak with your lawyer. Again, as I indicated before, your attorney uh, can only give you advice and counsel about whether it's his opinion you should or should not testify at the end of the day. It is always your decision to make and your decision alone about whether you choose to testify in this matter or whether you want to remain silent. Again, I remind you, if you do choose to testify, anything that you testify to here will be subject to cross-examination and could be used against you in any criminal prosecution. Have you had sufficient time to speak with your attorney? You have to say yes or no, please. The answer was yes. Okay. And uh, do you wish to remain silent or do you wish to waive that right and testify? I want to testify. All right, Mr. Lewis, um, that is your understanding from your conversation with your client that he wants to testify? Uh, th that's my understanding okay. from that. Judge, that's my understanding from the conversation with my client. That's also my understanding from his talking to the interpreter during the detective's testimony after I explained to him we're just listening and he would have an opportunity to testify when he when when we got to this point. And okay. the fact that, that that he kept talking to the interpreter leads me to believe that he needs the court to hear certain things. All right, I just wanted to make sure that you as his counsel had had that conversation. It was your belief that he wanted to waive his right to remain silent. So go ahead and swear in your witness. Yes, sir. Do you swear from the testimony that you provide this afternoon? The case of State of Georgia versus Eduardo Cruz would be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God. You have to answer out loud, please. Yes or no? Yes. All right, and Mr. Interpreter, I'm going to need you to speak up when it is your turn to translate, please. Go ahead, Mr. Lewis, the witness this morning. Up, okay, good. Now, the interpreter is really the only voice that we need to hear, but uh, I suspect the judge would prefer to hear you audibly before the, the interpreter interprets. The interpreter wasn't there, so he doesn't know what happened. You were there. The, I, the judge may understand some Spanish. I only understand a little, so we, we're gonna we're gonna ask you the questions. We're gonna listen for your answer through the interpreter. You understand that? Okay. What's your full name? How old are you? I can't hear the interpreter, Mr. Lawrence Lewis. How far did you go in school, sir? Middle school? 
Do you recall being arrested and brought to the jail in this case? That's a yes or no. That's your well, I'm struck over because there was a warrant for my arrest. That's fine. That's fine. Do you recall the police putting handcuffs on you at the townhouse? Yes. Okay, good. Um, um, when the police put handcuffs on you, were you under the influence of any drugs, medicine, or alcohol? Okay, good. So you remember when the police put the handcuffs on you and brought you here to the jail, right? How long had you been at the residence prior to the police coming in and putting handcuffs on you? Okay, good. You say. Okay, hold on, hold on. Mr. North Lewis is not able to hear. Can you repeat that, Mr. Interpreter? I can't hear you. You're gonna have to just yell at me. We're still having trouble. Oh, hold on. We're not. Can you hear me, Judge? I can hear you fine. I can't hear the interpreter. I can okay. make out what he's saying, but it's not loud enough. It's probably the angle. So what I'm yeah. going to do is I'm going to have him sit where I am. I'm going to sit where he is. Okay, fair enough. Let's see if that helps. Mr. Interpreter, can you repeat that last answer, please? I had arrived home uh, about half an hour before. Much better. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lu Lawrence Lewis. We're good now. Can, can you hear me? Not great, but you're, we can hear you better than we could hear the interpreter. Can't hear you, Mr. Lawrence Lewis. Can you hear me? No. So I just you stood behind the interpreter and asked the questions. And then the interpreter responded, We'd be, I'd be able to hear the both of you. Okay. I accept all challenges. <laughs> all right, let's see if this works. Can you hear me now, Judge? Good. Mr. Cruz, you, you indicated you arrived home. Um, um, did you own the house or rent the place where you were arrested? No, I was renting the house. Okay, who else lived there? His name is, well, we call him El Chino. All right, and did, did, did he share a bedroom with you? Did he stay in the living room? Where else, where did he live? Well, let's say, for example, he brings a lot of people in and uh, he they stay all over in every bedroom. So I that morning, uh, I arrived and I was going to shower. I don't know who was staying in my room. Okay. Let me understand. You rent a room in the house, is that right? Yes, I do rent a bedroom, but um, when I am not there, he allows people to rent the place and uh, I don't know when I'm not there, who's there? Okay, so how long have you been in that arrangement? I rent a room, but when I'm not there, other people pop in and out. How long has that been going on? Since I started renting, uh, 
it's been about half a year. Okay, so for six months you rent a room, and when you get there, you sleep in that room. Bueno, por seis meses rentas un cuarto y cuando llegas ahí, duermes en ese cuarto. No, not there. Sometimes I just uh, pass by, but, but can I say more? I'm just, I'm just trying to understand the arrangement. You can explain the arrangement. I'm just trying to understand your connection with the room. Solamente quiero entender el tipo de arreglo que tienes y tu conexión a la recámara. ¿Puedes explicar el arreglo? No, a veces llego a veces a quedarme allí. A veces me digo que hay algo que para ir a la recámara. Sometimes I arrive to stay there and sometimes I stay there so that I can be picked up by other people. That's fine. So, so you have a key to the residence, correct? Pero entonces tienes una llave para entrar a la casa, ¿verdad? To go into the house, yes, but to go into the bedroom, uh, it's an open area. Okay, that's fine. You have a key to go into the house, and, and if you get there at 8 p.m. at night, do you then just go to the bedroom and see who's there? Do you have to call, or do you just go in and go to sleep? Entonces tienes una llave para la casa, y cuando llegas a la casa como a las 4, 8 de la noche, Directamente te vas a tu recámara a dormir, o ves quién está allí, o le llamas para saber quién está allí, o te vas directamente a dormir. No, pues, primero voy a entrar el tiempo para saber dónde está la recámara. Si no hay nadie, no hay nadie. Bueno, primero voy a entrar primero, y luego le pregunto sobre... Le pregunto... Le pregunto... El interpreter quiere aclarar eso. Le pregunto... Blank. Who is in the restroom? Interpret, um, judge, can the interpreter tell the respondent to give me complete sentences? If he, if he can. If he can. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Puedes darme completas, por favor? Porque dijiste le pregunto y no sé. Cuando llego, pregunto si está desocupado el cuarto para poder subir, acompañarme o. When I get there, I ask if the room is occupied or not so that I can go shower. Okay, good. So, in terms of in terms of sleeping in the room, in the last six months, how many nights have you spent in the room sleeping? Bueno, en términos de dormir en el cuarto por los, por los últimos seis meses, ¿cuántas noches has estado durmiendo? Uh, muy pocas, porque como allá se fiesta casi no hay dormido. Uh, very few times because for example when there are parties or on the weekends there are a lot of there's a lot of noise so I cannot sleep there so uh, very few times only when I need to be picked up uh, um. that's fine do you rent a second or a third location where you primarily sleep eh, tengo una pareja que a veces yo me quedo en su cuarto, allá en su casa, pero yo eh, eh, pues me mantengo ahí en, en esa casa, me mantengo en esa casa. A veces me quedo allá o, o a veces me quedo allí, me quedo allí. Um, I do have a partner. Sometimes I go over to my partner's um, and I stay there during the day. Sometimes I uh, go there uh, at night uh, and I switch back and forth. Okay, good. On the day you were arrested, you indicated. I couldn't hear the question, Mr. Lewis. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You indicated earlier that 30 minutes prior to the police arrival, you arrived at the apartment, correct? At the townhouse. Yes. All right. When you arrived there, who was there? How many people were there?
and then the two people that were brought over here. So in total, about six or eight, I don't know. Who was the owner? What's the name? We call him El Chino, but I don't remember his name. We call him El Chino. Did you sign the lease with him, or did you just have a verbal agreement? No, it was a verbal. From the time you arrived and went and took the shower to the time that the police officers arrived, had you gone into the room that you sometimes occupied? When I was in the shower, uh, I was the one who heard someone banging on the door. And then I yelled out who uh, who was banging on the door, and I realized it was the um, the police when I went out to look. So then I went upstairs to put on some pants because I was naked. Have you ever gone into the room prior to taking the shower, the room that they say is your room? ¿Ya habías entrado la recámara antes de irte a bañar, el cual, la recámara que dicen que es tuya? Yo cuando el estaba abierto, yo me asomé exactamente en la ventana de aquel lado eh, y yo vi que ya estaban los policías allí pero cuando ellos me vieron porque se me asomé en la ventana. When I went in, it was already open, and when I looked out the window and saw the police, that's why they saw me, because I was the one who looked out the window. Had you already taken a shower then, or had you not taken a shower then? Did you have to take a shower or no? No. Okay, were you naked when you looked out the window, or did you have your pants on? When you looked out the window, were you naked when you looked out the window, or did you have your pants on? Eh, no, I was naked. No, I was naked, um, getting ready to put on my pants. Before you looked out the window, did you see the drugs in the room? Antes de asomarte por la ventana, ¿viste las drogas en la recámara? No, but can I say more? Sure. Claro. I said, well, it's only marijuana, and, um, and they said, no, it's ice, um, and I said, it's not mine. Okay, if there was marijuana in the room, did you smoke marijuana that was in the room? Porque si había sido marihuana en tu cuarto, tú fumabas marihuana en tu cuarto. Tenía yo a lo mejor dos cigarritos allí. I had maybe uh, two little cigarettes there. Okay, the, the other drugs, the meth, the cocaine, uh, whatever other drugs, the heroin, any other drugs in the room, did those drugs belong to you? Bueno, y las otras drogas uh, que había, ya sea las metanfetaminas, cocaína o lo que sea, o la heroína, estas otras drogas eran tuyas? No. No. Belong is, belong is the wrong word. Did you, did you possess, did you take any drugs into the room, or did you have the intention of removing any drugs from the room? No, no, never. Do you recall telling the police at any point in time that the, that the cocaine or methamphetamine or heroin in the room was your drug? Do you recall telling the police that? In a moment, do you recall telling the police that the cocaine the cocaine or methamphetamine or heroin that was in your room was your drug? Do you recall? No. If you did, if you did tell the police that the drugs were in the room, were you only talking about the marijuana? Te habías dicho a la policía de una, una droga en tu recámara. Sí, sí. Hablabas de la marihuana. Yes. Okay. Yes, those are all the questions that I have. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Lewis. Mr. Cruz, you admit that you live in 
B2 at 5830 Buford Drive, right? Five eight three zero Buford Drive. You admit that you have a room at five eight two thirty Buford Drive B two, right? Yes, it was shared with many people, but yes. You keep your clothes and your belongings in that room, don't you? You keep your what, sir? He said clothes and your belongings in that room. Yes, I kept it on by the side um, where other people also kept their stuff. And you regularly sleep in that room, don't you? I would I would go stay there every now and then. And you pay rent to this person you call El Chino every week or month, correct? Yes, yes. And you are also known as Carnalito, correct? Carnelito. Carnelito. Yes. And the name Carnelito is inscribed all over that room, isn't it? And you heard all of the testimony that Detective Wolf gave, didn't you? That's all the questions I have for Mr. Cruz, Your Honor. Any redirect, Mr. Lawrence Lewis? I go ahead and redirect, Judge. Thank you. Any further witnesses or evidence on behalf of the defense? Uh, no, sorry, Judge. No, all, all, all the argument. Any uh, evidence or testimony in rebuttal, Mr. Norris Lewis? No, Your Honor. All right. Let's let them get situated so Mr. Cruz can hear the interpretation argument. Mr. Lawrence Lewis. Judge, uh, one of the best things about being here uh, in Gwinnett County for about 20 years uh, is uh, I know that I really can't play a whole lot of poker because I really don't have sort of a poker face. Uh, but I think people also know that, uh, well, this is all a game. He's already interviewed his client, and now they're offering this story. No, this is a fresh story. I've never heard this story before. Uh, and I think a lot of people understand, that, oh, it's reckless. He doesn't know what he's going to say. Well, I know that he, he, he can't sit here quietly uh, because he's responding to the testimony. He's responded to the testimony, but he, he's 50 years old. He's not a little boy. If he's 17, I have to ask myself, why can't he sit quietly? But he's 50 years old, and he seems reasonably intelligent in, in the conversations that I had with him. And of course, now we understand why. It's okay if you don't believe the story, Judge, but it makes perfect sense to me. Why does it make sense? Well, because it's COVID, and people are desperate for money. And people are selling any little space that they can to generate any little bit of money. And then we take what he says, oh, it's all it's all duplicitous. That's fine, or, or, or duplicitous. And we put it with what the officer says. They don't have, they, they're not looking for him. They don't know anything about uh, his description. They can't tell us if he's been there for five minutes or for five years. And, and so we take the officer's testimony, we put it with his testimony, and, and did you hear anything from the officer which would indicate that what he's saying is a lie? And I would contend you heard absolutely nothing. Maybe because he's super clever, and through this weird interpretation, he was able to put it all together really quickly. Maybe he's just telling you the truth. Maybe he stays with his girl, but he goes over there to shower, he gets picked up, and he has a little piece of the plate uh, where he keeps his clothes. He identifies that as part of his room, but 
but he's not partying over there. He's not bringing drugs over there. He has some marijuana. But he's not involved in any drug sales or partying or any of that. And that, of course, speaks to his inability to just sit and listen to the evidence. So, listen, I'm going to respect whatever the court does, but it, it's clear to me, and it may become clear to Norris Lewis, that my client is not possessing any drugs in a room that he rents, that he partially rents. This is what we're talking about. It's a timeshare. <laughs> That's what it is. It's a timeshare. He comes over to shower. If it's quiet and his girlfriend maybe says, I've had enough of you for now, he'll sleep there. If there's nobody else there, it's a timeshare. He's only been there for half an hour. And I would, I would contend that the evidence between what he says, which is absolutely not contradicted by the officer, and what the officer says, they don't have the right person. He's, he's sharing the room with someone else, hasn't been there long enough to know what's in the room, hasn't possessed anything that's in the room, it doesn't constructively possess anything that's in the room. And that's why I argue the charges should be dismissed, Judge. State. Your Honor, without commenting on Mr. Lawrence Lewis's decision to allow his, his client to testify, he's, Mr. Lewis is an experienced attorney, uh, and there is a reason why people do anything, and there is no invalid or wrong decision. So I, I don't care if Mr. Lewis decides to put up his client to present an alternate story. But the reality of an alternate story, an alternate version of events, is that's a question for a jury. The question here is whether or not there is probable cause to bind over the charge of possession of methamphetamine with intent to distribute. There were almost 28 grams of methamphetamine found in a room that Mr. Cruz admitted to officers that he rents, that he admitted to this court that he rents. Now, he did add the additional persons and the, the caveat that he only stays there a few times, only when his girlfriend puts him out. But he does pay rent monthly, weekly, even during COVID when times are tough and people are desperate for money. But he's got enough money to have a little stash pad as, as a crash pad as he describes it. But the reality is probably more likely that that's simply just his room. He had been to the court that his nickname is Carnalito. You heard Detective Wolf testify that that name was basically painted all over that room. He spoke with uh, Investigator Dangle and Quezada at the scene, and those officers had stated that he testified that, or admitted that both the small amount and the larger amount of meth belonged to him. Those are more than user amounts. There were packaging materials throughout the house. Um, he was actually seen in that bedroom, in the window from that bedroom, immediately before officers executed the search warrant. And part of what Mr. Lawrence Lewis argues is that because officers weren't looking for him specifically, they didn't have his description, they didn't have his picture, um, that these must not be his drugs. Well, the reality is, is because they weren't specifically looking for him, they didn't have his picture, his name wasn't on the search warrant, there's no reason to make up the fact that he admitted those drugs were his. He's not the, the, the big target. They found a guy, they found drugs, the guy admitted he had the drugs, and so the guy gets a warrant and gets arrested. At best, what Mr. Lawrence Lewis has presented is a defense that he can present to a jury and that a jury can make their decision on. But what he's really presented is a completely self-serving statement that this defendant has had almost a month to work on while he has been incarcerated at Gwinnett County. Uh, and that fits with facts that he cannot dispute. Um, he does, as renter of that uh, residence, as more than an overnight guest, own a presumption that he is in possession of all that is contained within it. Uh, and for that reason, there is more than enough probable cause to bind over the charge of possession of methamphetamine with the intent to distribute 
uh, to Superior Court. Mr. Briefly, I, I think the court understands that what my I understand the arguments of counsel based upon the evidence presented to the court. I do find there is probable cause to bind it over as possession with intent to distribute methamphetamine. Uh, is there an issue of bond before this court, Mr. Lawrence Lewis? I don't know if you can address bond. Um, possession with intent to distribute, um, um, cocaine. I don't think that that that's a, that that's a charge that the court can address. I mean, listen, if I'm wrong, that's fine. We'll address bond, but I, I don't think, I know traffic, you can't address trafficking. And I think a possession with intent to distribute cocaine, schedule one, schedule two, I don't think you're, I don't, I don't think the superior, the magistrate court has jurisdiction. I mean, I'm fine. You know, if everybody disagrees with me, we can deal with it. That's fine. I'd love to deal with it. I, yeah, no, it's my understanding the court does have uh, jurisdiction for. I can't do manufacturing. Well, let me look at it real quick. Yeah. Okay, I, now you've got me. I, so, now you got I me. I suspect Mr. Lawrence that this is correct. All right, well, then we'll leave it for Superior Court and we'll call it a day. I don't think, I mean, you know, <laughs> and I think he was marijuana, but, you know, it's just, it's done. But I don't think, I don't think the court was a possession with the tip of cocaine or, okay. cocaine or methamphetamine. So we'll deal with it over in Superior Court. Thank well, you as I said, this is, uh, it's been a year and a half, so I'm shaking the cobwebs off for prelims myself. So okay. appreciate the, uh, the direction and the correction. So, all right, Mr. Cruz, you are back with the deputy. 